Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevail. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Amen. How many know you're excited? Amen. Why? Because you're in the house of God in Jesus' name. And I have a message for you that's going to open up your eyes of your understanding. We're still talking about grace, but today we're going to have a call to live in Christ and dead to the law. So we're going to pray and thank the Holy Spirit for an awesome teaching. It's not very long, but it's very powerful. Hits the spot, so to speak. Father God, we thank you for this awesome day, this wonderful time that we can preach and teach, that we're alive in Christ and dead to the law. We thank you, Father God, for the blessing that comes upon this message. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for giving us revelation, knowledge, illumination, and comparison in the Word of God. And all the people of God said, yes and, amen. yes and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Sin has no power over you. Everybody say that. Sin has no power over me. Amen. But yet people still sin because they're letting sin have power over them. Let's read in Romans chapter 6 and 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. Say, thank you, Jesus. Sin does not have power or authority to tell me what to do, to make me go do something. God's grace has getting me, set me free. So thank you, Lord. So let's begin with Apostle Paul's example of law and grace. Now listen, this is an example. This is a teaching that will show you the difference between law and grace. It's in your Bible. All right, we're looking at Romans chapter 7 and verse 1. Know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he lives. The law has dominion as long as you live. This is what he's sharing. Okay? So we're going to look at the illustration to the law. All right? Verse 2. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then, while her husband lives, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Oh, wow, so many people get legalistic when they hear this verse. Mm -hmm. Jesus died so we can be dead to the law. Amen. In verse 4, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit, unto God. And you start hearing Paul and we start seeing what is he showing? He's showing comparison in the Word of God. So if a tree is well watered, then the root of that tree will be strong, right? So fruit comes because of water. We must be well watered in grace to bring fruit. Say thank you Lord. So let me give you a Bible drama. Everybody likes drama on TV. Everybody knows there's got to have some good and the bad, you know, in the drama. So the drama of God's love and the law. Okay? You with me? All right. There's a lady in the Bible called Ruth. Ruth was from the tribe of Moab. A Moabitess. The tribe of Moab was cursed by God. They cannot enter the congregation of the Lord. That's it. Let's go look at Deuteronomy 23 and verse 3. An Amorite or a Moabite 
shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. And Moab was the son of Lot. Let's read Genesis 19 and 37. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And yet there's people advertising to go to Utah to Moab. Duh, did people not understand what the name Moab is? That they act like it's a neat place. Well, God created the earth, but they put a wrong name on it. So here we see in this drama, Ruth is living under the curse. How many want to get out of that? She married to a Jewish na man named Malon. Okay? Malon means sickness. Chilion means dying. She has no fruit, and both brothers die. So she returns to Bethlehem with Naomi. She went to the fields to glean, this, to glean and that's done for poor people. Okay? Then the boss came. His name is Boaz. His name means strength. Ruth went to his field to glean and found favor. Say, thank you, Lord. Boaz is the wealthiest man in Bethlehem. He is an eligible bachelor. Boaz is in the family of God and he sees Ruth, and she is disqualified to be in the family of God. So Boaz is a type of Jesus in this drama. Okay? Because under the law of God, when a person becomes poor, or when his land is mortgaged, there's a way out. It's called the relative redeemer. Ruth is poor. And she has a way out of it if she finds a rich relative and most importantly, one is willing to redeem her. Willing to buy back her land. And the law also says that he must marry her to produce fruit because her husband is dead. Are you starting to get this picture? Okay. Not only is Jesus rich, but he must be willing is he willing? Answer is yes, he is. Is Jesus part of the family? This is why he became a man. To be part of the human race. To be a close relative. So, Boaz was a close relative and he fell in love with Ruth. Boaz wanted to redeem Ruth, her land, her poverty, and to marry her. Uh-oh. In every drama, there's a third party called the conflict. The Bible says there's a close relative even closer than Boaz. Who came first? The law or Jesus? The law came first and Jesus came after. Boaz told Ruth he wanted to redeem her, but he's not the closest relative and has to ask the closest relative if he wants to redeem Ruth. Can anybody figure out who this closest relative is? Okay, you're going to hear. If he exercises his right to redeem you, then he will marry you. And Boaz met the relative at the gate with the ten elders. Okay? The name of the closest relative is not given because the law has no name. Anybody figure out who this closest relative is now? He's the law. Jesus has a name. Boaz tells the relative that he has to buy the land and marry Ruth to redeem her. And the relative said, I cannot. Because the law cannot bend. What's the law say? 
You're a Moabitess. The law can't bend. The law says that a Moabite cannot enter. Relative would not redeem her because it would ruin his reputation and his inheritance. That's in Ruth 4, verse 6. The law cannot save you, and the law cannot redeem you. Jesus came down to redeem us. Boaz wanted to confirm his right to redeem Ruth, so he asked for the shoe of the closest relative. So he gave the shoe. What is the meaning of giving the shoe? It means this. Mr. Law, you have no more right to walk all over Ruth. Now, we all know that Ruth in this story is you and me. The bride of Christ. Boaz is Jesus. The close relative is Mr. Law. So Jesus has the shoe, but some church people think they can take the shoe and give it back to Mr. Law to walk all over God's people. Boaz and Ruth, they get married, happy ending. Mr. Law walks away. I cannot mar my reputation. Ruth chapter 4 verse 9. Jesus says to us, today you are witnesses that I have bought and redeemed everything. Everything that has to do with death and disease. Jesus has the shoe and the law has no more right to walk on you. Mm -hmm. The next scene. Ruth has a child, the son of Boaz, called Fruit. Rome, uh, Ruth chapter 4, verse 21 and 22. And Solomon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat Obadad, and Obadad begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. We got some grandpas in here. Amen. So, do not be a person who holds on to Mr. Law. Is this making sense? Because the law is going to walk all over you. You didn't do this, you didn't do that. So what the church does is this. They commit spiritual adultery. They say, I can keep the law. They want to hear the preaching of the law. They think they can keep God's standards by the law. However, when they fail, which they always will, they do this. They run to Jesus. Wash me. Forgive me. Bless me. Jesus says, I forgive you. Ah, now I can go back to Mr. Law. Oops, I broke some eggs. So I have to go back to Jesus. They never have a real relationship of Jesus. God calls that adultery. There has to come in your life that you must not have any more dealings with Mr. Law. You are married to Jesus. So when you are sad, you tell Jesus, He is your joy. When you are confused, you tell Jesus, He is your wisdom. His love for you never fails. He is your peace. Every morning when your eggs break, His mercies are new every morning. When you ever are lacking, He is your strength. When you're down, he is your lifter of your head. Don't go to and fro. Once and for all, learn to have a relationship with Jesus. Together you will bring forth fruit, and together you are married. So let the people say this. Let the people say this about you. You have been with Jesus. He is yours, and you are his. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this awesome teaching on giving us alive with Christ and dead to the law. We give you praise and glory for all the people of God said, yes. yes and amen and amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Praise God, hallelujah. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. We're glad that you watched our latest video and we want to invite you to become a partner with our ministry. Partnerships mean that you pray one for another. We pray for you, you pray for us. You send us a seed offering, we'll send you a DVD. Our DVDs will help you to become ministers of God. And as a partner, we'll also notify you when we have our next healing explosions in your area. Or we'll let you know where they are so you can come and participate with us in Jesus' name. We want to teach you to become God's minister in healing the sick, casting out devils, the things that Jesus did. Amen. Our ministry is to help the body of Christ to grow and become what God has called each person to be in Jesus' name. So we're asking you to be part of our 250 partners this year. Let us know. So give us a call at 503 652 2650 or get on our website and check out rider.org. You'll be surprised of all the goodies we have on there just for you. So we thank you for being our partners. We invite you to come back and see us more often. God bless you. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.